Hey everybody, this is Anthony with you again from Biblical Truth Reality. This is part two of the series of proving that Jesus did not pay for our sins on the cross. In this part, we're going to be going through specific passages that people try to use to try to prove their false doctrine that Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. There's no scripture, once again, just make sure you hear me right, there is no scripture that teaches this. And you'll see the truth right now, so stay tuned. Now, let's begin by first defining two definitions. The words we defined in the previous first video. First, propitiation, the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person, the act of making propitious. In theology, the atonement of atoning sacrifice offered to God to assuage his wrath and render him propitious to sinners. Christ is the propitiation for the sins of men, Romans 3.25, 1 John 2.2. So, once again, from my notes here, we have to keep in mind these two definitions. So, basically, propitiation basically means to silence or still, or to still or silence, wrath with favor of the guilty person. And then, we have propitious, which also basically means disposed to be gracious or merciful, ready to forgive sins and bestow blessings applied to God, favorable as a propitious season. So basically, propitious means being merciful and ready to forgive, showing favor. So therefore, if you put the words propitiation and propitious, propitious <laughs> together, they basically mean silencing wrath and being ready to show grace and mercy by forgiving sins with favor. Keep this basic definition in mind because we're going to apply that thinking of literal definition because these, that word propitiation is found in some passages of Scripture. By the way, just as a side note, in the first video, I mentioned that um, for the words paid, pay, and payment, those are the only occurrences in the Bible. However, I was wrong <laughs> about one of the terms. I believe it was the word pay, if I'm, if I'm correct. The word pay is found approximately 41 times in Scripture. So I was incorrect on that, so please forgive me for that wrong. Um, I do admit that that was an error that I made in my statement. Now, back to the definitions. Does all of this mean, from the definitions that we just gave, does all of this mean Jesus did all of this on the cross when he died? No, Scripture says this. And let's go through these passages right now, okay? Just so you can see the proof that Jesus did not pay for our sins on the cross, no passage teaches this. So let's get to it. The first passage is Romans 3, verses 24 through 26, as you see here. A common passage I reference a lot in my videos. By reading these passages, by looking at them at least, God did the act of appeasing once again. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt that. We're going to apply the basic definition of the two terms we just defined to these passages. Why? Because that's literal definition and interpretation. That's what we are supposed to do, right? <laughs> so, God did the act of appeasing wrath and gave his favor to the offended person, sinner, which believeth in Jesus. Verse 26. You see? God has removed his wrath from the sinner, from his past. Verse number 25. People say, we're saved, Anthony. Well, what are we saved from? A hell that you have not been to yet? You can't be saved from some place if you've never been there. What were we saved from? Our past lifestyle of sin, away from God's commandments, against God. That's what we are saved from. We're not saved from hell yet. No scripture says that we are. Interesting. Now, let me ask you this. Did it say in this passage in Romans 3 that he already removed his wrath and paid for everybody's sins when he died on the cross? No, that's not what it means. 
So there's proof right there. But we're going to give three other passages just to shut you up. Those of you who believe Jesus paid it all. He paid for our sins on the cross. No, he didn't. Like I said before in the first video, I believe that some of you, you were sincerely ignorant and you just didn't know. You thought you were right, but you were sincerely wrong. I'm talking about those loud mouth, false teaching heretics who don't care what truth actually is. They go by what their mommy and daddy say, what their denomination says, what their opinion is, what their feeling willing is, what the commentators say. You know, toss all that and burn it. Okay, second passage, 1 John 2, 1 through 2, as you see here. In this passage, Christ is the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person's sins and of the whole world. Now, did this passage say at all that he already removed his wrath and paid for everybody's sins on the cross when he died? No, it's not what it says. Stop twisting what it says. So that's strike two for those of you who believe Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. Strike two for you. Let's go to another one. 1 John 4, verses 9 through 10. In this passage, it basically says, God sent his son to be the act of appeasing wrath and conciliating the favor of an offended person or person's sins. That's what the word propitiation means. That's why we use the definition for that word, so you will better understand. Did it say in this passage, once again, that he already removed his wrath and paid for everybody's sins when he died on the cross? No, that's not what it says. Now, it did say to be the propitiation for our sins. In other words, that's what he was destined to be by God's plan. If you want to be something, then it has not been achieved yet, has it? No. It says to be. Do you see that? It says to be in verse number 10. The latter part of the verse. To be the propitiation for our sins. That's what it literally says. Don't twist scripture around. Don't you do that. Accept it by what it says. Stop adding your own opinions. Knock it off. Lastly, the last example of Scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20. When did God buy with a price our bodies? Because it says, What, know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So God buys our spirit and our body, as well as our soul. <laughs> but, um, but it says in the verse, your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay? When did God buy with a price our bodies? At Calvary on the cross? No, no scripture teaches that he did. It says in verse 20, For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Who is the ye and your in the passage? Is it heathen he's writing to or saints? Think about it. It's the body of Christ, the saints. Does it say you are bought with the price when he died on the cross? No, it doesn't say that. You are twisting scripture around when you say that. So, is it accurate to say Jesus paid for all his sins on the cross? No, it is wrong. Now, some of you might think, well, what we meant is, listen, the fact is we do think in language. And so the quality of our thinking can only be as good as the words we structured them in. Therefore, if you can't say what you mean and mean what you say, shut up. Shut your mouth. Why? Because otherwise you're going to look like a adding to God's word, Bible twisting idiot. Stop twisting God's word around. Once again, I'm not saying this to those who did not know and they were sincerely ignorant. I'm saying this to those false teaching heretics out there 
who want to twist God's word and make it say what it does not say. Stop that. Because, once again, Proverbs 30, verse number 6, Add thou not unto his words, as he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. You know what God says about liars? Revelation 21, 8. All liars, refuting one saved, always saved, all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. If you're adding to God's word, stop it. There is not one passage that says or teaches Jesus paid for our sins on the cross. No passage says it. Stop teaching that. That's a lie. Scripture does not teach it. These scriptures that I provided here prove it. That he did not pay for our sins on the cross. So you are refuted. Fact. And you know it. So stop teaching your lies. Jesus appeases wrath and pays for your sins, if you want to put it that, that way, and purchases you, you are bought with a price, when you believe on him, as in the first passage in Romans 3, which believeth in Jesus. Did you believe on Christ when he died on the cross? No. So no, Jesus did not pay for our sins on the cross. Fact. So that's all for this video, brethren. Part 3 will be coming soon. So all of you take care, love the Lord Jesus Christ, fear God to keep his commandments, and read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks. Thank you.